This is a heavy summon a gun. scare him away. Alright. Progress. The, uh, I got all my sheet rocks on the wall on the ceiling and ended up ordering a mural wall covering for this wall. Maybe they'll share it right here. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? The mysterious forest. Fog and shrouded forest. It looks a lot like home here. So I'm going to put that whole wall into this wood wall. Is going to be that mural. Anyway, I was thinking, as somebody emailed me, uh, I'm trying to go through, find all the emails I haven't read again. I had somebody email me going off about, you can't make me change my mind, I still believe they're an animal, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. That's fine. <laughs> you know, it's funny, people, imagine how many people in the world have arguments with me when I've never even spoke to them. But anyway, aside from that, so I was, I was using just common sense, right? Just common sense and knowledge of predators and how they work and what they have to do daily. And... Even even game animals, prey animals like deer, like as an example, this one monstrous old buck I watched followed for like six years or something, five minimum, maybe six. I physically seen it twice with my eyeballs. That's it. But I've seen his tracks all over the place and got trail camera pictures of them. But what I'm saying is that they can't hide their tracks. They can't. 
and they have to leave tracks to find food. They have to. And the same as your average predator. If you hear any noise, this uh, adventure dog is right here chewing on a deer antler. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you guys some examples of just using common sense. It's common sense, okay, here's this huge, monstrous sized animal running around the forest being concealed, too smart for humans to see, but a simple animal. All right, let's go on, on that basis now. I'm going to share with you what I know about wolves, what I've learned about wolves. I've had to deal with wolves on a large scale for a long time, and I learned everything I could about them over the course of numerous years. Now, a wolf, let's just say a predator-sized, um, predator, let's take a predator, a natural predator like a wolf that needs meat. All right? Now listen to this. This is all factual. Now, your average wolf needs at least two to two and a half pounds of meat a day to survive. All right? And on that note, just to, for your uh, other information, just for side note, a, a wolf needs around four pounds of meat a day to be able to trigger it into reproducing. Okay, they won't reproduce if they don't have enough food. But they do need minimum, just to breathe, around two, two and a half pounds of meat a day. All right? Now, some may find this surprising, but your average wolf is only 65 to 70 pounds in weight. That's your average wolf. Wolves look real big, but they're actually very, very lean. Very tall, long-legged, and very lean. All right, they got huge feet. They run on top of the crusted snow with those big feet, but they're a very lean animal. I'll toss in a picture of myself with one of the largest wolves I ever caught. And this wolf, believe it or not, is only 129 pounds, and that's it. Looks like it's freaking huge, right? So that's your, this is an above average wolf, this one I'm showing you guys right now. Now let's just do the math and say, one of these upright beings that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have witnessed, I witnessed for 10. Let's just say they were an animal, simple predator, okay? So, if we went by what a, your average predator, a wolf, needs to survive, and let's just say we're going to take a moose. So a moose is around 1,000 pounds, all right? A nice big moose around 1,000 pounds, and without a doubt, these beings have been described as basically the same size, maybe even bigger. So we're going to go 1,000 pounds. All right, 1,000 pound being divided by 70 pounds, which is the average wolf, is 14.2 times. All right, so let's just say one of these beings needed the same amount minimum as a wolf to survive daily, just to breathe. We're looking at 35 pounds of flesh a day, a, what many might call a Sasquatch would need, just to breathe, just to stand up and breathe, 35 pounds of flesh a day per being. So, another thing too, oh sorry, the 14 comes from, sorry I forgot to mention that, a wolf can eat up to 14 pounds a day, 14 pounds in one sitting, that's 14 pounds. And you know what, one time we caught a bunch of wolves and inside their stomachs were actually the, the ball joint and the femur bone was in their stomach from, from bighorn sheep. And uh, I think we we weighed out, it was an average 9.7 pounds to 12 pounds of wild sheep were in their tummies at that time. A lot of meat, right? So they can eat up to 14 pounds a day in one sitting. It's a wolf. Now let's do the, the math. If it were a Sasquatch, that would mean that a Sasquatch would be able to eat in one sitting, sitting at the table in one meal, 200 pounds a day of flesh. And that's on a good day. That's a good catch. 200 pounds. Now, let's just say there was a family of them. All right? A clan, which people refer to them as a clan. Let's say it's a clan. That's a shit pile of hunting. That's a shit pile of gathering food. Now, picture this. Let's just say, even if you're all by yourself and you need 200 pounds a day and you're out hunting, you are not going to be able to hunt only where you conceal your footprints from human beings. You're not going to be able to do it. It's not, it's not possible. Pick up what I'm putting down. What I'm meaning is, is while you are hunting for that 200 pounds a day, every single day, or even your 35 pounds of flesh a day, which you need, or even fish, your prey 
is not going to only run around where humans can't see the results of the hunt. You pick up what I'm putting down. When an animal, you're out there hunting, you, you do not have a choice where you have to go and walk or run across to gather that, that game meat, that elk, that deer, the fish in the river. You're not going to be able to do it, right? No predator can. It's like grizzly bears up north, or what, we're at grizzly bears in BC. Even when we're hunting grizzlies or, or when we're hunting anything else, we see grizzly tracks everywhere because they're nonstop looking for food. They can't conceal the tracks, but they can avoid us. I can easily, not easily, but I would be able to find where a grizzly bear probably is, probably sleeping and probably set up a way for him to come out. It wouldn't take me long to find, physically get my eyes on a grizzly bear, but I'm going to find his tracks and his feeding sign anytime I feel like it. I'm going to be able to find grizzly bear tracks and the sign of them feeding because they can't hide it. They cannot only feed where I will never ever see the sign of them. Picking up what I'm putting down. So if these thousand pound, 800 pound, I'm not even sure how big you think they are, or how big, I mean, I shouldn't say that, I don't care the size. The fact of the matter is, if these beings were a simple animal, which so many people are trying to make you believe and accept and play along, if they were a simple predator, there is absolutely no way they are going to keep the sign of their existence so hidden from our sight so much, so often. You know what I mean? It's not possible. Does not get juicier than this. Look at this wolf tr crossing in this slough. It's amazing. Just pounded. Pounded. Straight below the bear meat, maybe 200 yards down the slope. Here we go. This so, thing. what's the other answers? <laughs> right? What's the other answers? And what we're picking up from tens of thousands of eyewitnesses, the answer is a little bit much for your average human mind to wrap around, and that is a fact. You know what I mean? Picking up what I'm putting down? So if you use common sense, common sense from a, a professional hunter, a lifelong hunter such as myself or many others, all right, it's a simple animal. I should be able to find, but just from what it needs to survive daily, there should be one hell of a shit pile of physical sign all over the place from them having to hunt and gather their fruit daily. There has to be. And it's funny too, another thing too, when you take the common sense part, the weirdness of it, the facts of it. As an example, where I was previously living in Pemberton, Whistler for the last whatever, how many years, that area is also, coincidentally, it's also one of the top destinations in North America to go snowmobiling. The, uh, the places, the access to the Alpine, the snow load is absolutely insane and attractive for snowmobilers, recreational sledders from all over the world. And they come there and there's thousands of them. And I've been in those mountains sledding with friends numerous times. Now, if these were simple animal and the tracks they leave, especially in the winter time, you're going to have to really ramp it up because you need a lot more energy to stay warm. You're really going to be stretching out in the snow hunting. Right? I mean, we see wolf tracks all over the place in wintertime. Cougar tracks, it's easy to see because they really have to pick it up to hunt. And um, <clears throat> out of all those snowmobiles going everywhere, circumnavigating those mountains, those valleys, going through the timber, you are going to see that animal, Sasquatch animal footprints all over the place from where they're hunting, especially because the, the prey is condensed into those wintering zones. Very easy to find the sign, but you're not seeing it. It's not there. There's nothing. Nothing. But then there are sightings year round, right there. <laughs> What's up with that? You know, talking to the native friends in, at the Mount Curry, the Mount Curry uh, community, asking them, I go, do you think these things, like, are they here year round? Do they leave? Are they gone for the winter? I'm like, no, they're here year round, year round. All right. How are they pulling this off? Right. And I have had, I've spoken to numerous people who have seen them in the wintertime around that area. They've seen the tracks around there in the wintertime as well. Whistler Search and Rescue told me flat out they found um, six foot stride, 17 inch long footprints, which sunk three times deeper in the, in the frozen crust than their footprints by the Wendy Thompson hut. I think you can Google that up on Google Maps. It's to the west side of the Duffy Lake Highway, more on the southern end, okay? Whistler Search and Rescue found those prints. And Whistler Search and Rescue also found prints in 
between North Van and Squamish in some of those pictures. And then you've got the footprints disappearing in the alpine, in the snow, disappearing, trackways absolutely disappearing. There's no denying it. There's no denying it. It's a pattern, right? Anyway, there you go. If I had to address a room full of people asking what's up with these animals, well, I'd probably deliver this. All right, well, here's the deal. If they were an animal, this is what you would be finding effortlessly, easily. If they're an animal, I would be able to go out and find their tracks and the signs of them hunting and murdering moose, elk, and deer. I could go out and find the sign of that any day of the week. You cut me loose in BC looking for wolf sign, I'll find it in one day. Easy, right? Easily. But you can't find the sign of these beings easily. You can't. Go figure, right? Anyway, moving along. Enough of my babble, but that was my little delivery of the day as I sat there daydreaming and contemplating. Okay, let's just say it was a simple animal. No, they're not. Now, let's listen to some people. This email is titled, North Idaho Woods. Hi Steve, these two pictures I've attached were taken in Northern Idaho on July 2019. My sister and I had her two dogs with us. We were parked on the side of a fire road to take a short walk. I remember it was quiet, not uncomfortable, but we felt we were being watched. Both dogs were alert, staring up the hillside at something. It's difficult to see anything as the trees are so close together. We got back into the car and continued driving. We came upon a small creek running down the side of the road and parked there so the dogs could play in the water. They seemed not to be on alert, so we started walking. This first picture I took of a tree that was twisted off, still living, with about five feet on the left. The rest of the tree was across the road near some bushes. The second picture shows these structures made out of living trees with other dead trees jammed into them. The trees jammed in between the living trees had the root ball still attached. Big trees. No one could lift them, much less jam them between the trees. And it wasn't storm damage. No other trees in the area were done this way, and there had not been any logging activity. All this was suspended at least 30 feet off the forest floor and suspended in such a way as to support itself. The weird thing I spotted were eyes just to the left of the tree where a smaller branch comes in from the left side. At first I thought it was a moose. I took the picture, then it was gone. Yeah, a moose 30 feet up. Yeah, glowing eyes. Moose's eyes don't glow. As we're getting creeped up by what we saw, we heard three whistles, each one in a different location, one right after the other. A triangular pattern. The female dog, Ginger, started to growl. The male dog, Charlie, ran to the car and hid under it and peed. The only time he showed that behavior was when we encountered a mama grizzly and two cubs on our way up the road to a place called Roman Nose. Good outcome. We called Ginger to the car, loaded them up, and left the area. Ginger is good at warning of danger. She is a 15-year-old Husky Shepherd wolf mix, one tough cookie. Charlie is, a young, is young, still learning the woods as a great, a great Dane, plot hound mix. When we went back to the same location the next year, everything was gone except for a huge X on the forest floor below. I'm in Idaho twice a year for mushroom hunting in the spring. Berries are in the fall. Occasionally we do hear odd sounds and ginger is good to alert us. Excuse me. We've seen other structures on occasion and this spring we will take our advice and announce our intentions to whatever is out there. I live in Nevada and explore the desert as much as possible. Strange stuff out there as well. That will be for another email. Thank you for taking the time to tell of people's encounters. I hope this helps those to keep going to the woods, the desert, wherever you are. Kathy Logan, Forever Exploring. And there's a couple photos. All right, Kathy. Appreciate it. Are we missing some photos? I see we've attached these two pictures. Okay, we've got them both. Would be cool to see a little farther back from the ones jammed up in the tree. You see the height and everything, but oh, there's the root ball. Oh yeah, I think I see a root ball on the right. 
Interesting, right? I'm glad you're picking up on the observations. Be safe out there. Welcome to the club. And the dogs know, the dogs know again, right? The dogs know. That's funny about what the dogs know. You know, they have dogs that can locate cancer on a human. What's up with that? I also know of dogs can. There is search dogs, cadaver dogs. This is what I was learning about wolves years ago. I was learning about everything I could about canines. And they have dogs that they take out on a zodiac, on the water, on a river, and the dog will alert to where the body is underwater from above water in the zodiac. What the hell, right? What do they know? What are they picking up on with these beings? Why are they 100% terrified of them? <clears throat> right? There's another email titled, Another Scientist 2. Hi Steve, perhaps you remember my email of last October 2022. I'm a retired scientist in my late 70s who chose to go by the name of Sam. Please not share any of my personal information. In my previous email, I addressed issues regarding the smell, portals, EMF, silence in the forest, cloaking, responsive Sasquatch to the name Jesus, Nephilim, Dogman, and the cloak of government secrecy. I believe that you and Dave Plyas know more than you're willing to share at this point, as you both are focal points to whom so much information flows. Today I'm going to share some information that may not be new to you. Choose to do it as you wish. You may want to read this first before sharing. I never do. <laughs> Number one, origin of these beings. As I noted in my previous email, these beings have been around since before the great flood of Noah's time. I think there is no question that these beings, Sasquatch, were genetically engineered by a race alien to our planet. They are a genetic creation with a specific purpose and not randomly created. The woman portion of the genetic puzzle that is part of Sasquatch is the foundation so that the being could survive in the atmosphere of our planet. The added portion of the half of the genetic puzzle was designed to dominate the environment for a, for a specific purpose which I mentioned later in this email. Number two, physical structure. Though we have no physical e specimens to examine, as far as I know, we can deduce some important characteristics. They have a different pelvic structure. When they walk, their steps do not parallel one another, but overstep one another, i.e. instead of two parallel tracks, their, foot, their footfall falls one upon another in a single straight line. Try walking that way, and you'll see the difficulty in doing that. Great for tight rope, tight rope walking, but uncomfortable for normal locomotion. Their pelvis is different. They are much heavier than we realize. Comparing foot impressions of these beings with that of humans, the soil compaction of these beings is far greater, indicating a much denser mass. Some have suggested this is a reflection of their half of the genetic makeup as to their origin being from a much larger planet than Earth with a greater gravitational force. Their weight would be concentrated in the skeletal structure. Hence, if we look at the amazing feats of strength these beings demonstrate, not only would they need the muscles to perform them, but a huge, if not massive, skeleton to provide the leverage and the foundation to do them. Number three, orbs. I think there are two primary types those that gather information and those that are the precursor to the opening of a portal. Those that gather information are for environmental sensing and information gathering, always listening. The orbs that are portal per precursors basically sense the immediate physical environment to determine if the area is clear for a portal to open. One would not want to open a portal in a boulder or a tree as that would affect the being when it tried to leave the portal. Since this is a transformation process, the being perhaps would not survive if the portal did not open in a clear space. Number four, tagging. Not to be confused with consciousness streaming as discussed in psychology. It is quite real and is a physical rather than psychological phenomenon. There is a paper that discusses this. Relation between plank, plank length and origin of consciousness in life sciences, a mathematical proof. 
It addresses consciousness and, defined in the terms of physics, quote, electromagnetic waves of velocity greater than that of light velocity at its orig origination point, i.e., within 1.6 times diameter of Planck length. Thus, it will transform into a biological consciousness field surrounded by the biological organism, end quote. She's loving that deer antler. This is the, quote, being watched, end quote, sensation that we all have experienced. This is why when you scope one of these beings, they stare immediately right back at you through the ocular on your scope. Yes, once the connection is made, it is forever in this lifetime. The neutral link is opened. Coincidentally, I just watched the Sean Ryan interview, Dr. S Dr. Stephen Greer. As you follow Sean Ryan, you may have watched the interview on YouTube. It is worth your time to view it. At the 59 second mark, he briefly touches on remote viewing. There's a 59 minute mark, sorry. More to the point, at 2.02 mark, he goes into the physics of consciousness as it was discussed in the paper I referenced. It has real up applicability as to how these beings communicate with their handlers. Instantaneous communication covering vast distances, light years of distance. My brain's starting to hurt. Number five, purpose. I'm sure you've seen pictures of how stunning our planet Earth looks from space. It stands out from all the other, by comparison, dull bodies in our galaxy. Hence, it would be a natural draw for interstellar travelers. The unexplained technology demonstrated in ancient structures, apart from the presence of these genetic hybrids, with superhuman powers seem to support this. I believe they have a vital interest in what is going on with our planet. Certainly more so after the Trinity nuclear test in 1945, which caused a disruption in the galaxy from the vast EMP, electromagnetic pulse, that was generated and with the growing nuclearization and political instability on our planet, an all-out nuclear war would damage the galaxy and perhaps beyond, even affecting other interstellar civilizations. Also, perhaps their interest may be from the point of view of a refuge, or perhaps we are a raw material source and scientific experimental laboratory, based upon the strange nature of animal mutilations that render the dead animal off-limits to natural pred predators. More to the point, missing persons, or perhaps all these things. I think the extraterrestrials are very concerned regarding our ad advancing technology and our use of it. Hold on a minute. Hey, don't chew on that, go chew on your bone. Just get a little restless, might have to cut her loose here in a second. I think the extraterrestrials are very concerned regarding our advancing technology and our use of it both on the Earth and in space. I'm sure you recall the shutdown of the ICBM missile sites in Minot, North Dakota. This was a wake-up call for our government. As we have seen lately, there are more discussion about UFOs or UAPs in the press with reports from the Pentagon. Their creation of the Space Force by our government. I don't believe these are distractions created by our government, but evidence of increasing concern. We are being spied on and have been for a millennia. This in part explains the presence of orbs and these beings we refer to as the Sasquatch and their seemingly increasing presence. Some have referred to these beings as perhaps robots. I think they are bots, living information gatherers for those who created them, hence their appearance at military sites, weapons, and nuclear research facilities, and power plants, etc. Well, Steve, I know that my description of the purpose may seem a far a, a field for some, but it represents the reality of what our government is dealing with. We are not being told about. <clears throat> well, Steve, I know that my description of the purpose may seem far afield for some, but it represents the reality that our government is dealing with and that we are not being told about. If you or the listeners disagree, I ask for your indulgence and suggest that you pay attention to what is going on and balance it against what I have said. This is all that I have to share today. 
Thank you for all that you do to encourage a broader realization that there is far more to this thing referred to, disparagingly, as Bigfoot. God bless you and yours and be safe. You too, man. Absolutely appreciate the time you just donated to everybody through me. And I hope it has a lot of people's, uh, a lot of people are starting to chew on some thoughts, right? If, if you are truly trying to figure out what's going on with this crazy shit show called life. <laughs> it is a crazy ride, man. It's a crazy ride. I was just talking to Sarah about that this morning, have a coffee. How frustrating it is to realize just how dumb we are. To put it simply, right? In a way. I mean, there's probably better ways to put it, but that's just my way of saying it. It's frustrating. It's frustrating as you try to figure out what the hell's really going on because this club that we've been forced to join at birth. I didn't ask to join this club. This club doesn't make much sense. Meaning the club of, of uh, making us fall in line and do what we're supposed to do. Don't ask any questions and go along with it. It's not right. I know it's not right. My gut is burning it's not right ever since I was basically in elementary school, I'm guessing. But anyway, there you go. There you go, you guys. Chew on that one a little bit. See what you come up with. Fill that puzzle in, all right? And if you would, sir, email us back again, all right? Email us back again, please. Now, who's next? All right, this is titled, Keeping People Uninformed, Lifting the Veil. What's she got now? <laughs> Dogs are funny. Keeping the people of okay. Hi Steve, thank you for your resilience and ongoing persistence and all these important topics you have dedicated your time to share with us. I think I can speak for all of us listening to you. You're very much appreciated, highly valued as a true man. The man with big ones. <laughs> or dumb ones. <laughs> Thanks for that, man. The last week of March 2023, <clears throat> And I have eventually mustered up the energy to write this into you. Where does one start? When almost every third or fourth statement needs to be explained, explained slash qualified. Listening to your channel today, one of your members mentioned seeing beings with gills and a type of fish scale skin. I am Jorge, or George, Portuguese version of George. I'm the person who wrote in a while back regarding the missing insurgents in Angola and the predator-like thing we encountered on a mission back in the late 80s while serving in the Special Forces in South Africa. Of course I remember that one, man. That's, uh, that one really stood out in my brain, still does. I'm writing this in today, but I'm not sure if you want to share this with everyone. I've never shared this with anyone outside of a military building, and the information I'm about to share is, a, is as genuine as the sun shining outside during the day. What can you do with this knowledge? I'm not sure. Perhaps another layer of the puzzle, we're all trying to get a final picture too. This information was shared with me via three different sources, two of which I have known almost all my life. All having served in the military, and all with very high security clearances back in the 90s and early 2000s. I have no reason to doubt what was said slash shared to me by them or the being who I had some interaction with during those times. One served on the surface as a tank commander, but whose main role revolved around some, of, some form of intelligence unit and top secret technologies. The other worked with top, several top secret projects involving several specialists from various different countries. And the last one was an American who we, Special Forces, worked with on various operations of the top secret kind. Already back then I was using technology that has not been made public as of yet, bearing in mind that I served my country until 88. I can only imagine what they are using nowadays. There's a scary thought. I include the last email to you regarding the tagging and the energy as individuals and the, and the energy we as individuals give out slash resonate part of the lock on when we get tagged by these and other beings. I apologize in advance and I'll try to keep this as short as possible, so here it goes. 
titled They Are Among Us. They have been assisting us, and they have been with us for thousands of years. Sabe slash Bigfoot slash Sasquatch, I don't know how they fit into all this yet, but they definitely do fit in with us and these other beings. I can mention with confidence at least six different extraterrestrial beings slash cultures that I know of. I've only come into contact with one of them, but I have confirmed the existence of the other five through this one individual who is not of this earth. These are known to us as Tall Whites and Nordics. I personally had contact with a Nordic being. They look human, although the one I met and spoke to I found to be a fine specimen of their culture. I presume they all have similar features. They have nine variations of their own species, or so I was told. Tall, 1.8 meters plus, blonde, blue eyes, and fair skin complexion, albeit rough, like a person who suntans a lot. Super intelligent, and this is the giveaway. Mostly silent and very good at listening. I came to recognize this as taking data in like a computer mainframe, speaking very few words, can communicate in various languages, but always meaningful and rich in their context, my own experience. The quote, tall whites, end quote, apparently are of a pale complexion, almost chalk white, and stand well over 1.9 meters and are very slender in build, extremely intelligent, computer-like, and much more. They can re-engineer problems going into the future, coming back to apply the solutions today in their minds. Their facial features are very slender and bony, pale eyes. They too have hair, but totally white in color. They are the ones who have shown the highest interaction regarding technology exchange with us. The other four are so-called reptilians, quote, water living humanoids, end quote, tall, progenitor graves, and the trantaloids, a hostile, dangerous insect-like insect population of beings. The water-living humanoids is what sparked me to write this email to you. That bus driver clearly described this race of beings and apparently among us already. I know this is all sounding like something out of a crazy script out of, all of, out of Hollywood, and it isn't. These entities really do exist. Of the six, as far as I've been told, we work closely with the Tall Whites and the Nordics. They have shared information slash technology that has enabled us to evolve slash progress quicker. The smaller greys, commonly cited and reported as aliens, are a type of drone unit. They are a form of AI, Little Grey Programmable Life Forms, or PLFs, as they are commonly referred to by those who have dealings with them, that are used by the Tall progenitor graves to carry out missions. These are, quote, ma made slash manufactured, end quote, to carry out specific tasks and missions. They use small craft shaped like manta rays. The same craft involved in the crashes up in Roswell, New Mexico in 47. These AIs travel through, not in space. Traveling through space means that time, as we humans know it, goes to a zero function of the waveform. In other words, you may travel instantaneously to any point of the universe in a blink of an eye. As far as I have been told, this is the holy grail that JSOC, Joint Special Operations Command, is trying to obtain. The craft that these AI life forms travel in has an anti-gravity coating and the outer structure uses CSE, cavity structured effect, which is mainly situated under the craft as a wave guide, similar to what a microwave oven uses for microwaves. This enables the craft to travel silently. The key to CSC is in the cavity structure cells, skin. This is apparently shaped into the craft and is layered at micron thick level by various metallic minerals, the highest content being the highest content being that of magnesium, bismuth, and zinc. These metals have a very specific binding agent that is used to manufacture, used to manufacture the skin of these and other craft to nullify the effects of gravity of the craft it's applied to. I've been informed that MJ-12, a branch of military intelligence in the USA, designated an acronym for these and other extraterrestrials, namely 
namely HAVs, Hostile Alien Visitors. President Ronald Reagan was apparently introduced to five classifications of these alien species on around the 6th to 8th of March 1981. <clears throat> these were classified as number one, Ebens, E B E N S, <clears throat> excuse me, number two, Archqueoids, number three, Quadloids, number four, Heploloids, number five, Tarantaloids one being the friendliest, and five being the most dangerous to humankind. I was also intrigued by this, that I asked who specifically made these names up. I was told, Emmett Chappelle, famous American scientist. He basically invented, among other great inventions slash patents, the ultraviolet spectrophotometry instrument that we use in the medical field in pharmaceuticals. Coming from the medical field myself, this name was not at all strange, but what I did find strange was that this scientist had knowledge and worked within that field too. Anyway, back to what really matters. The USA made public that a, quote, new, end quote, military branch was being introduced. The branch was announced officially to the general public on the 20th of December, 2019. The first new branch, allegedly, of the armed services in 73 years, Space Force. They have an official site at www.spaceforce.mil slash about dash us slash about space force history. Okay. Okay, that's the brief background to this email. Now for the main content. Have you ever come across the incident commonly named as the Belgium Wave of 8990? Some 13,500 people witnessed the incident, making it one of the most widely experienced UFO settings of modern times. This was witnessed from several different locations. The craft silently blocked out the stars as it traveled silently over various cities. This was not an extraterrestrial vehicle. This was an American spaceship, one of the first spaceships that could travel two light years beyond the Kapir belt. Yes, you read that right. This was a human spacecraft. I've been informed that there are three other more advanced craft that are currently in service. I wouldn't believe this, but the source of this information has links and contacts who have worked with this technology and the beings who assisted them to build and operate that technology. Each one has been named, named after military greats in the U.S. The three deep space vehicles, DSVs, each made and carrying out specific missions. The older of the three has been crewed since 2003 called the USS Curtis LeMay, responsible for mapping slash cataloging 28 solar systems in our Milky Way so far. The other two, USS Hoyt Andenberg Reconnaissance and USS Rasco Hillencoter, H-I-L-L-E-N-K-O-E-T-T-E-R, Hillencoter. Supply ship. These vehicles are crewed by humans and tall whites and Nordics who assist with the first contact of other species of life in our universe along with the operational duties of running these craft. These beings were involved in the construction of these deep space starships. Tall whites. From, from 82G Aaron Danny which has at least three super-Earth planets. And Nordics, originally Procyon, P-R-O-C-Y-O-N-A-N-B, had to move out of their planet system due to a reptilian invasion. Supervise us humans. They have a base on the Ganymede moon, a satellite of Jupiter, the largest moon in our solar system. Both the Tall Whites and the Nordics have fought and still fight the reptilian race, both here on Earth and in outer space. I've been told that the USS Curtis LeMay is capable of Deep Quantum Tunneling Protocol, DQTP. This DQTP warp drive enables, enables to reduce travel time from light years to Earth days, something along the lines of 24 hours to 10 light years. I've been told that this technology is better explained by the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, 
too complex for my understanding. Again, I'm trying to substantiate what I'm sharing with known science to assist in understanding this disclosure slash share. Technology ex exchange is the basis of our relationship with these extraterrestrials. They consider our planet Earth as a laboratory on one hand, but also a place where there is an order. Apparently, Earth has specific rules that any visiting race have to abide by. They can deviate, break the law but this, from this, but apparently with heavy consequences to the transgressor. Planet Earth has been used by the Tall Greys, Tall Whites, and Nordics as a laboratory for approximately 278 million years. Their intent is to the human survival. Reptilians, as the Trantaloids, want Earth with no human life on it. But these three races have been preventing this. Trantaloids travel in craft shaped like slender cylinders. These have been mainly seen on the outskirts of cities slash towns and wooded areas. All different types of alien creatures look at Earth as a place to go for their version of RNR, rest and recuperation, and thus having to abide by the rules of the Creator. Like in John Wick, the, con the Continental, where the environment is neutral to all who enter it, but as the third delivery shows, rules may be broken, but they come with severe consequences. This makes me constantly wonder just how much Hollywood films slash producers slash directors have license to inform us gradually of some hidden truths. In all this, we can identify the truth of what is going on behind the scenes. I personally am trying to find out how Sabe, Wolfman, etc. all fit into this. Another aspect of our environment and the dealings going on in the cover of isolated, faraway slash hard to get to places and even in our own backyards at times. I've also been told that April 2023 will be the start of revelations. Our brains have a built-in key to the universe, apparently, and this may be activated by certain frequencies. Earth is experiencing a shift of source and humankind is being affected by this. These frequencies will enable us to start seeing what is really going on, apparently. Our brains will be receiving slash experiencing some sort of alignment slash enlightenment as from April this year. I personally have so many questions to this, but I've not received anything concrete other than this will be the starting point of some monumental change on Earth. I apologize for this lengthy email, but I honestly feel that I have only really shared the tip of the iceberg here. Anyone reading slash listening to this may not believe a single statement. I'll ask, do your own research into what I have put out there and share your findings here on this channel through you. If you don't get shut down for sharing this, that is, hence what I said at the beginning of this email, I don't know, do with this what you think best. I just thought that having heard what that individual talking about what he sees on his bus when at night, I had to confirm that this is true. As I continue this research, I'll feedback anything that links these to your and others forest activities. My regards to you all, and as always, Steve, we value your mission, the man that you are, and wish you and Sarah and the compendium of life forms that surround you both health, happiness, and the love that is known by all people, sorry, known by all those who have had to suffer to recognize and value it. Jorge! Or George. That's a big one, man. <clears throat> that is a lot for a lot to people to chew on. But if you go by the pattern, the pattern has been coming up for how many how many years of what people have been described seeing in the sky. Well, there's possibly your answer, right, you guys? How many people have seen the cigar shape, the triangle shape, the dead silent massive craft in the sky? How would, how would tens of thousands of people wake up in the morning all across the planet decide to make up the same bullshit story to share it publicly? <laughs> Not many, right? Not many. But that's a big chunk. It's a big chunk, man. That's a big piece of, of uh, something to share with the people, right? How many people are going to be going, oh, man. And how many other people are going to be going, I knew it. And how many other people are going to be going, 
I can't believe that bastard shared that publicly. Let's get him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Huh. Something else. I'm going to have to read that again by myself. Interesting, man. Keep me posted, all right? Let's see what comes this, this spring. Hopefully it's nothing bad. Hopefully it's nothing worse than what's going on right now, but we all, I think we should all be able to agree one thing for sure is we are all experiencing some rapid changes in the planet right now. There's, it seems to be, I've always figured there's no way there is not a major conflict going on that behind the scenes that I think it is slowly, um, the conflict is slowly being revealed to us daily, <laughs> right? Anyways, it's a, it's a big one, man. It's a big chunk of puzzle piece for somebody. Take from it what you will or leave it. But if you're looking for answers, somebody possibly just gave us a whole pile. Possibly. But, again, thankfully, he also included, look into it yourself, right? Look into everything that he shared, and then do your own due diligence. We all just can't sit here on our thumbs looking at a screen waiting for answers. You have to look into it yourself. We've said that. I've encourage it. I think Dave encourages it too non-stop. Look into it. <clears throat> Look into it yourself. Right? Look into it. Dig and find the answers yourselves. You come up with some answers and you share it with people who are doing the same thing, right? What an interesting morning this has been, hasn't it? Anyway, I gotta get my button gear. Tomorrow is definitely going fishing and definitely going to the woods. So today I've got some tasks to do. I think I believe I received my mural for the wall here at the end of the week, I think. And then uh, finish sealing, get the electrician here, and get this place frickin' fired up live. Anyway, again, man, appreciate you and your time. And, uh, yeah, keep emailing in, all right? Whatever you learn. Whatever you learn, email it in. If you want to share it with somebody, might help somebody, might help me. Email it. Just keep the information flowing, all right? Keep the information flowing. And buck against those that want to stop it. Huge. Now that is a very large gray wolf print. We think made probably uh, this morning, early. It snowed last night a lot. Holy cow, eh? Or we might have them up the road. 